Hello ladies and gentlemen and a warm welcome to all of you in front of your devices at home for this online event. Uh, we're really happy that you've been able to join us. My name is Detlef Fechner. I'm Deputy Editor-in-Chief at the Börsen Zeitung and it's an honor for me and uh, most of all a great pleasure to guide you through the upcoming hour. Just uh, two preliminary remarks. Uh, we will speak English sometimes, and then uh, we'll be speaking in German as well. Uh, it's going to go both ways, as uh, usual for a typical EU format. And as we're all busy today, we will end uh, right on time as well. It's a very exciting program we've prepared for you, but we will uh, end it uh, at 1 p.m. sharp. Without further ado, I'd like to give uh, the floor to uh, a co-host of this event, uh, would like to welcome you, of course, the Secretary of State for European Affairs of the State of Hessen, Mark Weinmeister. Mr. Weinmeister, you have the floor. Dear ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I wish you a happy and blessed new year. And even though we start this new decade the way we ended the old one with digital events, I hope for a more normal year 2021 for all of us. I'm pleased to welcome you all to our online event today on the topic of uh, sustainable finance, uh, which we have organized together with the Deutsche Bank AG. In this way, we can unite different perspectives. On the one hand, the perspective of politics, uh, which creates a binding framework for sustainable finance. And on the other hand, the perspective of the financial sector, which is challenged to uh, classify and offer bond and equity transactions as well as capital investment products uh, as sustainable in practice. Sustainability, ladies and gentlemen, is not a buzzword, not an abstract term. Sustainability is a concrete value that is so important that we commit ourselves to it in the European treaties. The task for us as Europeans is clear. We can only achieve true sustainability if we combine economy and ecology, if we see the market economy and environmental protection not as opposites, but as two sides of the same coin. An essential building block in this context is certainly the establishment of a sustainable financial system. Hessen is playing its part here. For example, the Hessen Ministry of Economics established uh, the Green and Sustainable Finance Cluster Germany in Frankfurt on the River Main in 2018, a cluster of excellence in which competencies for the implementation of sustainable financial structures are not only bundled, uh, but also effectively managed, as it were. The development of uh, such financial structures geared towards sustainability is also a task in the European research area. I am therefore all the more grateful that institutions uh, such as, as the Leibniz Institute for Financial Market Research uh, SAFE at the Goethe in the University of Frankfurt exist. Here the next generation of Europe is working and researching on the design of a sustainable financial architecture for its continent. Corona, climate change, digitization, the challenges for us as a European society are great. Overcoming them also requires a clear commitment from politics and the private sector to create a sustainable financial system. First steps have been taken. The Commission's renewed action plan on the Capital Markets Union sets out a clear objective on ensuring a green, digital, inclusive and resilient economic recovery. The outcome of the public consultation on developing a common standard on green bonds will be reflected in a strategy for sustainable finance in the EU to be presented in the coming weeks. For me, all this means not going back to the status quo before Corona, but looking forward with the issues that will matter. Digitization of the finance system, diversification of financing options, for small and medium-sized companies with sustainable business models and enforcing a policy that combines ecology and economy, to name just a few key aspects. Climate change is certainly the central challenge here. No company in the world can afford not to take climate change and its possible consequences uh, into account in its medium and long-term orientation. It is therefore all the more important that the EU and the European financial sector also set benchmarks here. With the Green Deal, the Commission has presented a concrete plan for the future to restructure the European economy. 
The need for investment is enormous. The Commission is talking about additional annual investments of uh, 260 billion euros, which will be necessary uh, to achieve the EU's climate goals. The banks will also have a role to play. They are challenged when it comes to effectively integrating the so-called ESG factors uh, into investment decisions in order to provide loans and project financing for sustainable projects. But it is a challenge for all of us, because sustainability concerns us all. So let us face the challenges together. Let us shape a Europe of sustainability together. In this spirit, I now look forward to an exciting exchange with you on the topic of sustainable finance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark Weinmeister, for this uh, keynote speech. Uh, we have learned that the banks are in a particular role here and have to deliver. And uh, that's the reason why we'd like to uh, listen to another keynote speech uh, from the Deutsche Bank this time. And we are happy that we've been able to attract for uh, this purpose Professor Dr. Stefan Simon, a uh, member of the management board of the Deutsche Bank AG. You've been working as a lawyer for many years and then you came to the Deutsche Bank and you're here in your function as Chief Administrative Officer, CAO. And uh, you are coping with all kinds of legal matters and a lot uh, uh, of matters concerning the uh, supervision bodies as well. And so you have certainly a good contribution to deliver concerning sustainable finance. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Feshner, to have been able to join us as well in your role as moderator and allowing me to uh, deliver a keynote speech as well uh, as preparation for the upcoming decision to the Secretary of State uh, Weinmeister. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, in the name of the Deutsche Bank, a warm welcome as well and the best wishes for the new year. We are really happy that we've been able to attract uh, a high level uh, panel participants for a discussion on uh, sustainable finance today and um, we hope to be able to deliver and set a few impulses for the beginning of the year in this important topic. This is really important because obviously the uh, corona pandemic uh, has been uh, attracting a lot of attention uh, and a major focus uh, in the year 2020. Uh, this will continue far into the year 2021 as well without any doubt. But we are convinced as well that there will be other topics uh, of importance uh, in the long-term vision uh, and uh, developing their importance uh, for our society and economy uh, even beyond uh, the end of the pandemic. Uh, and uh, we think that sustainability is one of the essential elements here. And so it is uh, really a matter of importance in our view to continue the preparation work in this area and uh, to not... Uh, lose sight of these important matters. Concerning the topic of sustainability, you have to say it's not only a matter of climate change. Central importance, yes, but not only climate change. Uh, we have in the sustainability area matters like biodiversity, the pollution of the oceans, uh, and uh, at a very high level also social matters, social uh, standards, uh, only talking about uh, supply chains and questions linked to these supply chains. Uh, uh, some of you might wonder what uh, the banks might have to do with all this. Uh, so our answer is relatively simple. We think that uh, without the financial industry, the uh, changes uh, within society and within the economy will not be funded. Uh, banks uh, are a central building block in this whole matter of sustainability, starting uh, with the very simple funding of uh, uh, credit uh, and loan uh, financial aspects uh, for investments uh, in, on the side of the economy of our customers. But beyond that, uh, it's also in as uh, like debt financing or raising equity capital uh, by the companies. Banking are playing a key role here because they're involved also in the, the definition of standards uh, in uh, uh, influencing the uh, capital flows as well and have it an influence where capitals are being allocated and this is certainly something where sustainability is gaining in importance as well and finally uh, 
what's uh, left aside uh, uh, once in a while is the uh, role of banks in the area of risk management. Uh, a lot of our products and uh, services uh, that are we're proposing to our customers and the real economy uh, are turning around the area of risk management as well. And it's quite obvious that sustainability matters have uh, increasingly a role linked to questions um, of uh, risk management. We can see this also in the discussions uh, with regular and supervision bodies, uh, they are having an increased interest for this on a worldwide basis. Uh, without, uh, well, to cut a long story short, uh, the uh, landscape uh, of the banking area is of importance for sustainability as well. In this context, uh, a lot of banks in Europe have been taking up positions concerning sustainability, developing already a lot of uh, energy in this area. Just as an example, we have the voluntary commitment of German banks uh, in the future to have credit portfolios oriented in a way that, that the two-degree climate objective of the uh, Paris Agreement is being taken into account. The Deutsche Bank uh, has been taking up this commitment as well. Uh, beyond that, uh, a whole series of measures have been taken. For instance, uh, one objective is that uh, we have until 2025 uh, 200 billion euros of uh, sustainable assets to be financed. Uh, we have developed an internal taxonomy and a classification for the uh, funding of sustainable investments. Uh, and uh, in the last year, we have uh, issued our first green bond. We are quite proud about all this, uh, obviously, but we think that this is only the beginning of a whole development in the area of sustainability as Deutsche Bank, uh, but also as financial industry as a whole uh, and our economy and our society too. And this is reflected also in the activities that we've been uh, seeing from the EU Commission side, for instance. Uh, and I'd like uh, to... Uh, uh, quote one element of uh, a speech of the uh, president of the EU Commission uh, uh, indicating uh, that uh, this is really a man on the moon moment for the European uh, development. It is a fateful question, as a matter of fact, uh, for uh, our society, for our economy, in the transformation of our societies and our economies to be actively involved as well. And a few elements. Uh, are of central um, interest here from our point of view. And at the beginning of our panel discussion, uh, I'd uh, like the, to bring these on the table, so to speak. The first element of importance here from our point of view is to question how we will set up a framework uh, for sustainability and uh, sustainable finance as well. In the near future, the EU Commission will present its renewed sustainable finance strategy and we are hoping to find here clear impulses and further framework conditions. In the very near future as well, we will see the report of the advisory board of the federal government on uh, sustainable finance. Uh, and my uh, colleague, Dr. Podobnik, is a member of this advisory board. And uh, as far as we could hear and learn about this, uh, this will be a very important additional step uh, in setting up a framework uh, where we will evolve in the coming years and decades. Uh, it is quite clear as well that the new administration in Washington uh, uh, will be setting completely new impulses in the air for sustainable finance and uh, of uh, sustainability as a whole. We've had an opportunity for an exchange with some of the representatives in the United States, uh, and uh, this will certainly uh, uh, set a very important impulse here as well to have uh, on the global level also an orientation in the right direction. Very important from our point of view is that all three pillars uh, linked to sustainability are brought up. Uh, environment, social matters and good governance uh, of uh, companies have to be brought together in a balanced approach. On the long run, we cannot focus solely on one of these uh, three aspects. Uh, they have to be brought in a balanced way. What is it necessary uh, for that purpose? It's quite eminent uh, that uh, we will continue our discussions and developments uh, in the area of data, measuring values and transparency, meaning that it has to be clear for each and every one what the criteria are to measure uh, the data volumes. How can we create transparency, uh, which uh, 
uh, has to be developed in, in the companies to start with, but uh, then oriented in a way that within a jurisdiction, but also in a global exchange, they can be compared with each other. So they have to be comprehensive uh, and they have to be standardized. In this area, the proposal of the Commission uh, reforming uh, the uh, non-financial reporting, uh, due in uh, short notice as well, uh, will be a very important orientation to have as much as possible uniform standards. Beyond that, we have also the uh, funding as such as a central element here for us in the banking uh, sector. And to stick with the image of the man on the moon, we see here the fuel, the fuel to propel uh, this development into the future. So we have to talk about the way how this uh, fuel, uh, in other words, capital can be brought into this transformative approach. Uh, and we are quite convinced that it is right and makes common sense uh, that uh, it is important to create incentives here to make sure that the capital is uh, flowing into the right and into sustainable projects. These incentives have to be targeted. They have to be based on standardized and commonly accepted measuring data and uh, elements of information but uh, right now we can see quite often the problem that innovative and transformative projects uh, are, don't have an easy access to the necessary capital because in the transformation the database is not really adequate uh, and not really linked to the adequate uh, uh, credit processes and the risk management processes and in such a context uh, we are pleading in favor of a concrete but still targeted way of uh, creating incentives to have capital flow into the right uh, projects into in a transformative way. There can be particular factors uh, for capital requirements for banks, uh, having certain types of projects uh, supported in a particular way by creating divergent capital requirements and having the capital flows oriented in the right direction this way. Beyond that, we should be talking about a targeted uh, um, state guarantees as well and forms of support where this makes sense. Uh, we have regularly cases where the risk profile of investments uh, is not really adequate, uh, adequate for the uh, uh, common market uh, or the uh, regular banking market. And we should talk about possible ways to have uh, state guarantees as a political support for these transformations. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not take up too much of your time because it's mainly about your panel discussion here and your direct exchange afterwards. Uh, so let me conclude by by saying that we think that sustainability is not only an essential and central matter for coming years and decades. We, we also think that uh, by nature this will take a long-term approach and huge volumes of investment. Uh, we think that a strong financial sector is necessary to support uh, uh, this uh, process and to have a valuable contribution to be brought up. And again, we think that there has to be a political support uh, by having a uniform approach for data and measuring values, creating the necessary transparency and have incentive systems brought um, into practice in order to free up uh, uh, financing uh, flows and capital flows uh, for projects that will be needing in the area of uh, sustainability in the coming years. And then according to our conviction, this has to be implemented. Uh, and with this, Mr. Fechner, I'd like to give the floor back to you. Thank you very much again. And I'm really looking forward to exchange and the discussion. And I'm happy that at the beginning of the year, we have an opportunity to uh, set an exclamation mark in this very important area. We brought up in a first event of your series. Thank you, Virtue. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Simon. Uh, you have uh, given a, a few keynote elements here, standardized data, targeted approaches, uh, measuring units, maybe uh, guarantees as well, and we will gladly do so. Thank you very much for the Deutsche Bank uh, contribution as a co-organizer of this event. And without further ado, we will switch over to our panel discussion. And we would uh, not only want to have this in front of you, but together with you as well. So we are inviting you to contribute as well. If you want, uh, you can uh, send us remarks or questions. And we have an email address for you, which is uh, streamline at lv minus uh, Brüssel with a ue dot de. You can see it on screen, streamline at lv Brüssel ue. 
Yeah, thank you very much for this. So let's uh, have a presentation of uh, our panel participants. Uh, one person is well known as a host uh, initially and as an, a guest as well in panel discussions. Nicola Baer, born in Wiesbaden. Mrs. Baer, you have first studied law at uh, Johann Wolfgang Goethe University. You were a municipal uh, representative. You were in the regional parliament and the federal parliament in Germany. You were the Hessen State of uh, Secretary uh, for European Affairs, so a predecessor of Mr. Weinmeister. You were Minister for Cultural Affairs in Hessen as well. We've not forgotten about that. And Secretary General of the FDP Party. So today you've been able to join us as a, um, a member of European Parliament as well as as Vice President of European Parliament. I'm really happy that you've been able to join us. Thank you for being with us. Then from the Commission side, we have Martin Spolch. And graduated as financial risk manager and as chartered financial analyst. So you have a life in the industry, in the banking industry. And uh, then you switch to the commission. You had to do with uh, banking union, with capital market union questions, with fintech questions. And now you're here in your capacity as head of unit sustainable finance in the DG FISMA, in the Generaldirektion FISMA für die Brüssel Outsider. For Brussels outsiders, the Director General of ISMA is the uh, department uh, responsible for financial matters with the Commission. Being with us tonight here and uh, Martin Spolsch, we are very interested in what you have to tell us about the next steps of the Commission. Dann begrüßen wir Then we would like to welcome Stefan Schnell. We are quite envious here. Uh, you've studied in Bordeaux, Grenoble and Münster. Then you went to BASF. Uh, uh, working in different functions, uh, departments uh, as auditor, uh, linked to uh, finance controlling and reporting matters as well as accounting. So you're well prepared to give us an insight uh, into the area of uh, sustainable finance. You're here as vice president, uh, group reporting and performance management. Uh, warm welcome. Great that you're with us today. And last, uh, but definitely not least, uh, I'd like to welcome here next uh, to me in the studio, a member of the Bank uh, since uh, 2003. You've been taking care of regulated capital matters. Maybe we'll come back to this as well, incentives uh, precisely. You've been taking care of matters around uh, bail-in instruments, but also sustainable finance matters. Uh, and so a member of the Sustainable Finance Advisory Committee of the Federal Government uh, um, of Germany, and um, Professor Simon talked about this before, and you're here as CFO of the Corporate Bank of the Deutsche Bank, uh, Dr. Gerhard Podobnik. Uh, great to have you with us today. So I'd like to enter the discussion as uh, such and uh, ask Mrs. Beer, what is, from your point of view, an uh, essential element amongst the preconditions to be able to advance in the area of sustainable finance? So I'm going uh, to switch on the mic first of all. So greetings to all of you today. I'm happy that we talk about such an important topic today in this uh, panel discussion. Uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Seaman has been mentioning a lot of important points already, and I'd like to bring up another aspect, if I may, because we have a lot of uh, valuable objectives here. Uh, a lot of things uh, are being uh, jeopardized here, talking about climate and environmental protection and other topics uh, linked to the area of sustainability as well. But uh, these will be uh, managed in an adequate way only if we come back in the discussion to more reality, practicability and proportionality. What do I mean with these uh, matters? So the discussions as they take place right now, concerning about uh, very detailed data, down to the tiniest company to be brought up, uh, questions of uh, orientations, uh, not only from a political point of view, with the guiding systems, uh, market incentives, or possibly uh, uh, prohibitions as well. No, there's, uh, the whole banking and financial sector is supposed to be um, integrated in this approach. And uh, this leads to the danger that for the mass, for the 
broad structure of our economic companies and for the broad area of our jobs, uh, our training uh, positions as well, for um, growth within society, this is uh, completely inadequate. Uh, I see that in the present uh, working groups uh, no SMEs are represented. We have a lot of high-level groups, but in general uh, all I can see is representatives of uh, big companies uh, who might possibly take into account the interests of uh, SMEs as well. But in the initial remarks, uh, I hardly heard anything about the SMEs uh, either. And if I talk to the Federation, so this is completely inadequate uh, for the SMEs and so for more than 90 percent of our economy. And so in that sense, I urge you to come back in this discussion to the level of uh, company realities. Uh, and this is really linked uh, to the backbone of our economy being the SME structure. So um, solutions of practicability have to be found for companies of all sizes, meaning for us uh, that there has to be a strict SME test uh, for all these measures. Nothing should be decided upon which is not uh, to be implemented for uh, small companies companies, for micro companies, uh, or in the area of proportionality. This has, this has to be adapted well, uh, because uh, BASF and Deutsche Bank and other big companies can handle all this, uh, but uh, really tiny SME companies have to be uh, taken into account when you talk about supply chains as well. And the quality of a business model would not solely depend on matters of sustainability, but also about uh, company governance and other elements, especially if we talk about the fact uh, that uh, you have to uh, based this on own capital as well. And in that sense, uh, this is really uh, critical for me. It could be a very good green model, still have uh, risks, and we have to be really careful here not to go beyond the initial objectives. It has to be practical, proportional, and it has to be SME proof as well. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Baer, for this uh, first input. We take into our uh, discussion here elements of practicability. Uh, so possibly, the, thanks to proportionality, this can be layered in an adequate way, allowing the SMEs to be taken into account as well. And uh, we can hear that uh, with the uh, green uh, factors uh, for capital needs, uh, you have a, a rather critical point of view. OK, Martin Spurge. So what is the key uh, prerequisite uh, for now advancing uh, sustainable finance? I just hear actually the translators. I don't know if it is possible actually to, to stop maybe the interpretation so that I can hear myself. Yeah, I had the dolmetscher not heard. I think that we have a problem with the interpretation because I hear back as well when I speak. So is it possible maybe to switch it off? I don't know whether this is also your case. Um, I mean, I of course, I understood everything what was said already in German. So I mean, I don't need actually the interpretation myself. But if, if you don't mind, I would continue in English. It would be a bit easier for me. Uh, I would like to first, you, uh, first thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, as you know, we are at a very critical stage now with the sustainable finance file. We are basically finalizing the implementation of the existing action plan on financing sustainable growth. And we are preparing the new chapter of sustainable finance that would better reflect the change landscape of sustainable finance. And there are two dimensions um, that basically influence the, the landscape quite dramatically. The first one is the European Green Deal that set out very clear targets and also the recovery context. And we believe in the European Commission that, that we can actually um, accelerate the um, recovery by um, using the green uh, transition in an appropriate way. And that these two agendas, speedy recovery and green transition can accelerate and reinforce each other. Um, uh, on your question, what are the kind of key prerequisites, uh, requirements for this project to be a success? Um, I would highlight three. The first one is, uh, Clarity from policymakers on the travel of direction of the direction of travel, where we are heading, being clear about the target, about being about being clear about the, the goals that we are we are having. And I think that the European Green Deal is already bringing this clarity. The second, um, obviously, um, uh, condition is that also policymakers develop appropriate tools and frameworks, not only for the financial sector but also for the businesses, 
that would not be only proportionate and practicable, as we just heard from Mrs. Baer, but also that would be um, indeed usable, that would be politically acceptable. But I would also add that would be uh, credible. And that would be um, bringing the needed integrity into the markets that we need, because this market of sustainable finance or this green finance and sustainable markets are growing quite rapidly. And we need to make sure that this growth is indeed very fast, but at the same time that we bring the necessary integrity into the market. So for that, I mean, we are uh, obviously calibrating the appropriate trade off between appropriate regulatory intervention but at the same time also pursuing actions that would not be regulatory and that um, we would need to pursue together with the financial sector and businesses through other means than regulatory means. So uh, linked to that, we believe that it's very important to keep a very strong partnership between policymakers, between the public sector on the one hand and the private sector on the other hand. And so far the green finance and sustainable finance has been um, an agenda that uh, try to green finance, if you wish. But now we also need to shift the mindset into making sure that we also finance green. So how the, to make sure that the financial sector is part of the solution and how we also incorporate the businesses into the agenda of sustainable finance and how we make sure that this agenda is much more inclusive than only cap capturing financial sector. So that's again a big objective that we have. And we believe that to facilitate transition smoothly, we cannot be talking only about what is sustainable, what is green, but also how to transition towards something greener and less, less kind of brown. Uh, my final point is um, I, I spoke about what the public sector needs to do, about what the policymakers need to do, what also obviously co-legislators need to do. But uh, it's also important that the financial sector and the businesses themselves then use these frameworks and tools in an appropriate way, uh, provided that the policymakers uh, design these tools and frameworks uh, in the practicable, in the usable, proportionate way, then nothing in our current framework forces stakeholders to use taxonomy or to use the green bond standard or to use climate benchmarks. We are really in the hands of the financial sector and of the businesses to use those tools. And we very much hope that these tools will be actually very uh, you know, uh, used and actually be seen as a great opportunity for the financial sector and the businesses to facilitate their transition. So I would also call upon the financial sector and businesses to reflect what they can do with the tools that we have provided so far and contribute to the debate on the further development of this agenda. Thank you very much. Martin Spolsch, uh, thank you very much for this uh, first intervention. Um, we will come back to you in a second, uh, a little bit more granular questions. We have already questions from the audience uh, to the commission, and we are very much uh, interested and curious uh, about the renewed uh, sustainable finance strategy. But uh, you have uh, given us already some orientation uh, what way you are going. Wir kommen zu Ihnen, Herr Schnell. Now, Mr. Schnell, from the viewpoint of BASF, what are the important prerequisites in order to make certain that you can use and profit from sustainable funding and financing? Thank you very much for having invited me. Uh, you forgot that I come from uh, the state of Hessen, though... Uh, I obviously uh, went to other places and I'm right now in the region that is the Palatinate. Sustainability is at the core of all we have been doing. For example, already 10 years ago, BASF started uh, uh, with action in this matter. So we are very serious about integrating this into our culture. We are also convinced of the following. The chemical industry can make a contribution towards having sustainable solutions. The circular economy would be here an interesting example where the chemical industry can do important steps. Now, what is really essential, and we already heard this uh, by Mrs. Beer and Mr. Spolz, we must make a contribution towards incentives uh, for growth. Uh, it's also about the competitiveness of our industries. That needs to be strengthened. Uh, the investment capabilities need to be strengthened. We must not fall into the error to 
push out industry, to push out businesses. Sustainability must enable growth. Having this in mind, we are convinced of the following. We need uh, targeted, pragmatic, realistic uh, goals and objectives. We must not embark on over-regulation. So we heard that the taxonomy uh, can be well handled and um, used and understood, uh, but uh, it is complex uh, and, and uh, one has to be aware of that. So pragmatic, realistic solutions are important for us uh, in order to achieve uh, the objectives of the EU and of the recovery plan. And as Mr. Zeman also mentioned, that's also of importance for us, all aspects of sustainability have to be seen as equal ecological, environmental aspects, as social aspects and governance aspects. So, so it's a triangle. These are a so three-pronged uh, approach. Uh, and that is also of importance uh, and at the heart of what we're doing as a company. Now, last but not least, Dr. Podotnik. You represent the Deutsche Bank. Can you briefly describe uh, what is important in the eyes of the Deutsche Bank? Thank you very much, Mr. Fechner. Actually, I don't want to talk just on behalf of the Deutsche Bank. I will try to explain a little bit what is of great relevance uh, even beyond the financial sector. I, I refer to mega trends. As the word insinuates, uh, it has uh, become a very important topic for myself and my colleagues. The last 12 months have shown that sustainable fund is one of the big trends uh, awaiting us besides digitization. We are happy that there are so many people in a great variety of uh, sectors, also in the financial sectors, dealing with the topic. Now, what is required and what is needed in my understanding, in order to make the next step. Mr. Simon already touched on this, and the other panelists also touched on it. The further development and uh, the concrete development of standards and definitions. You might be surprised to hear that from me as someone active in the financial sector. But we have growth if we have scalability and standardization. The more we achieve a common understanding, then the more we will speed up uh, the opportunities for growth, also in the capital and financial markets. Now, the European Union has offered the taxonomy, and that's a good start. You already heard the other panelists, and I take up what you said. A wonderful start, but now we must make certain that the falling happens. We have a variety of sectors, we have a variety of companies of diverse sizes, so we must make it uh, achievable and practical for those. Second task, uh, further development for company reporting. You already heard a few words on this. Uh, uh, there is a reform uh, plan for the non-financial reporting uh, by companies, uh, very important. So we have to further develop the concepts, and we must make certain that we uh, achieve quantitative data. In the financial world, you like to analyze and to compare. And the more it's based on quantitative data and concrete figures, the better. So something. Uh, that resembles the financial reporting. So the closer these uh, can uh, be uh, shaped, the better. And a third aspect, you might be surprised. When you work uh, for a bank, then you deal with regulation. There's a lot that is regulated uh, for a bank. Uh, any activity of a bank uh, is uh, found within a regulatory context. As Mr. Spol said, one thing is important as a sector and the financial market in general need to have an idea what is the direction taken by the regulatory framework. Financial markets uh, are regulated, yes, and that also opens an opportunity to give guidance, to steer it correctly, to give the correct incentives. 
So that leads us to what incentives? And generally the question, where do we want to go? What are the goals of reforming the regulatory framework? Because that determines a lot where the markets will be moving. All these things together mean that they must enable us to give concrete support to this transformation for the real economy. Because this is not about the banks on their own, but it's about the banks giving funding and financing in order to enable this uh, pathway leading to transformation. Thank you very much. I want to highlight three topics uh, I heard uh, mentioned by all of you. Standardization, clear criteria, proportionality, differentiation, practicality. We could reflect on that. How can we combine those? Second area, how reliable are the data? How can we measure things? We need reliable data. We need reliable uh, figures. And we also heard the following non-financial reporting. That might be the second uh, topic. With you, Martin Spolch, is uh, uh, the uh, idea of a green factor. Uh, we have heard this with Professor Simon. We have heard some critical uh, voices from uh, Nicola Beer. And we have already a first question from our um, audience. And this is uh, Philipp Nimmermann, uh, the Wirtschaftsstaatssekretär uh, in Hessen, who asks, uh, What's the um, Commission's uh, position on a green sustainable supporting factor? Thank you very much, Detlef. Well, I think that the position remains what it was, I mean, uh, that we presented in the action plan back in 2018, which is that the Commission is exploring possible merits um, to adjust the prudential requirements uh, that would better reflect not only the risks, and you know, here I would like to emphasize once again that the riskiness of exposures will need to remain the primary consideration that will obviously determine the capital requirements. There is no other way, and we are not going to change that approach. But however, then the question is, you know, should the prudential requirement consider other elements than the riskiness of the exposures? And here, I mean, we have um, embarked on a, on, a, on a pathway together with the European Banking Authority that is exploring whether, for instance, some exposures, such as energy efficient mortgages, would um, ultimately lead to a lower probability of default of, of borrowers. And we are gathering evidence with the help of the European Banking Authority if this is the case. And if this is the case, then we might consider changes of the prudential requirements. But again, I cannot tell you whether we will do that. We, will, we are still at the stage of gathering evidence. We are looking at it from the very, very objective and science-based approach. Um, what I would like to add that we are not biased only to the green supporting factor. I mean, we are also exploring whether, for instance, supervisors should be given uh, appropriate tools to increase the capital re requirements in case there is an increased risk of the assets uh, of, the, of the balance sheet of the banks not being sustainable over time, I mean, in the entirety. We also need to look at the individual risks that the banks might be facing if they will have on their asset, on their balance sheets, I mean, assets that might ultimately lead to stranded assets. So we are not looking only on the green side, on the kind of the carrot, on the unrights, on the incentives, but we're also looking at the risk side uh, to make sure that the sector will continue to be as robust as possible. So at this stage, we are not planning, certainly not, uh, to introduce a green supporting factor for all assets and for exposures that will be on the green taxonomy list. That's certainly not the case what we are going to do. As I said, I mean, for the time being, the approach is rather kind of narrowly framed by the energy efficient mortgages or green loans um, and similar exposures. But again, we first have to finalize the work before we can uh, proceed with any, any approaches that would change the prudential requirement. We are not yet there. So that means uh, in spring we cannot uh, expect that they are already in the, in the renewed sustainable strategy already uh, some uh, new instruments uh, coming up there. As I understand you, uh, we have to wait and we have to see more scientific evidence for what we can use uh, and what we ca cannot use. Is that right? 
Well, Detlef, I cannot tell you now in what will be in the strategy because the discussions are still ongoing. Um, the decisions have not been taken and they will not be taken ultimately by me. What we are doing as DGP is now we are preparing the ground for our political masters to make appropriate policy decisions. And I cannot tell you that something will not be there. I mean, it is still possible that there might be some uh, elements of the prudential requirements of the CRD CRR. As you know, the Commission is preparing a legislative proposal amending the CRR CRD for other reasons than sustainability, but it is clear that the sustainability considerations will be an important part of the review of the CRD CRR. How? I cannot tell you today. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, uh, Nicola Beer, when I ask you a question, thank you very much, Nicola Beer. You raised the question how practicable, how feasible is all this? We know the credit sector desires standardization and criteria, but you also said we need here finer adjustments. Can the two be brought together? And you mentioned that we need a kind of SME testing of legislative proposals. When you think of sustainable finance, what needs to happen to make it more attractive for small and medium-sized enterprises? Indeed, it will be a very important question. It's not just the banks, but also fund manager, etc., who request data and figures. And what we have to get tackling is the following question. A lot of data, a lot of figures, more and more reporting is something that cannot be handled by small and medium-sized enterprises, even less so after the COVID crisis. And also when you think of digitization and environmental and climate protection technologies, uh, they have to deliver with regard to these uh, buzzwords and, and uh, with the reporting. And these are often family-owned businesses where the wife or the daughter tries to do the reporting and handle the data. That's not uh, easy. And you cannot just uh, uh, expect that they deliver this uh, no matter how. So what I appeal for is that you do not require too much reporting. Be and remain realistic. Look at what is feasible, what uh, can be achieved easily, and what uh, still gives you reliable data. Many companies uh, are concerned when they think of the stats uh, required potentially, because they would need to know very quickly what do I need to report in order to prepare adequately? I think what is expected is crazy. It can't be handled. It's not uh, viable for many companies. So when you think of standards, maybe you can help them by saying for new businesses, but not uh, going back in time, not retroactively. And think of really small businesses. And I heard BASF even finds this sometimes a complicated task, uh, though they're much bigger than a small skilled crafts business. So we, we should not here uh, try to, to do it uh, that we are at a cliff and, and uh, suffer from vertigo. It's about providing liquidity to the companies to, so that they are viable. And I think of incentives to become more ecological. For example, the pricing in the ETS trading scheme, the pricing of CO2. That is something where, as an entrepreneur, I can uh, prepare myself. Uh, shouldn't. Uh, if you think of the studies and uh, service provided by the IFO Institute, um, green investments, green bonds is a growth market right now. In other words, you don't really need to offer a lot of artificial incentives and guidance and steering. Be wise with the incentives uh, you present, like for research uh, and also for infrastructure investments, for example.
So we have to be really careful that we don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Thank you very much, Mrs. Beer. Clear appeal, yes, a greener economy, but not by uh, forcing the uh, financial sector to just look at the green side of things very unilaterally. Maybe you can help with my understanding. I heard your appeal, so maybe you can elaborate. And I will also ask Mr. Podatnik to explain to us what do we lack? Uh, is it the money? Is it the projects? Uh, or, uh, so, Mr. Schnell, please. Yes, I uh, support what Mrs. Beer uh, described in her with the aspects, she described it very well. It's very complex and complicated, so it needs to be well targeted what we do, and it needs to be feasible and viable for the companies. Standardization. When I think of the industry, I can say that a high level of standardization is of interest. First of all, it allows you to compare things. And it also allows you better to handle the whole supply chain. And often on a voluntary basis, uh, we are interested uh, in uh, sustainability uh, issues uh, and ask about them. So it's good information to receive uh, and uh, to pass on. What might be the solution? Well, proper solutions uh, that also work for SMEs, a kind of modular approach. In other words, uh, don't try to regulate every detail, but be modular in what you offer. We would be very happy uh, with such an approach. Thank you, Mr. Schnell, for my better understanding. And there's also a question from the public. More ambitious pricing of uh, greenhouse gases, uh, would you be happy with that? That would be a system that gives steering effects, but also has inherent flexibility. Well, you mentioned the steering ability. We have the ecological aspect, we have the social aspect, we have the governance aspect. We have three aspects, and they need to be well balanced. Uh, the pricing of greenhouse gases is certainly one solution, but it's not the overall solution. It's not the only tool, not the only instrument we should look at in order to develop a truly uh, ESG-governed uh, um, and led economy. Where's the bottleneck right now? Is it the money? Uh, is it the lack of projects? Uh, where do you see need for action? It's very difficult to say uh, what is lacking. And we heard, uh, for example, the topic of the Mrs. Beer. What should the banking sector do and what should the banking sector not do? Because we are looking here at a political decision in the end. And if you ask 10 people about sustainable finance, they will give you 10 answers. And the same different answers you will uh, hear also when you ask what has been achieved already in this matter. Now, looking back at what we heard today, if we want to incorporate the entire economy very quickly, so bigger companies and smaller companies, then we also are aware of one factor. The German bank, um, the Deutsche Bank, is listed in the stock exchange, so we are in the public eye. And there is a stakeholder environment uh, to Deutsche Bank that also offers a lot of motivation and incentives to behave in certain ways. And if all want to do something and ought to do something, then we really need a clear context. Uh, as specific as possible, it should be described. That's an essential requirement in order to determine, is there a bottleneck? Another issue, do we lack money? Is there too much money out there? 
Do we lack projects? Are there too many projects? Difficult to answer that question. But I can say one thing. A lot more could happen on the demand side, namely to have more projects, uh, to, to, to fill the pipeline a little bit uh, more quickly. So, and we offer the funding for this. If you look at the whole world, uh, we see here uh, different speed uh, in this matter. And do we lack funds? Do we have more funds than needed? Well, it's about uh, balancing the risks. Uh, if we would be aware of a bottleneck, and if you would be wanting to give a signal, then the question is, in what direction do we guide uh, all this? In what direction do we steer all this? I try to summarize. It's actually very difficult to give you an answer. And it's about concrete approaches and solutions. This would give us a basis that certainly would not necessarily be perfect yet, but it would be a foundation and would get us started. And by being concrete and ever more concrete, we will move in the right direction. Thank you very much. Now, we have a very difficult uh, task. We have here Mr. Spolz. What do we tell him for the renewed strategy? this spring. Could you tell in one sentence if you could give something for Mr. Spolz to take home with, what would you tell him? What do you say should be part of this reworking of the strategy? Mrs. Beer. Very important is the, the need to have it